All right, let's start with Vestavia Hill is hosting Homewood tonight. The Patriots coming off that loss to John Carroll. First quarter, the Rebels off and running. William Tonsmeyer Jr. going 70 yards down the sidelines. You know, you wondered if Vestavia would be looking past Homewood to the big game with Thompson next week. Not a chance. John Paul had the four yard touchdown, made it eight nothing. And then later in the first, Vestavia head to Cooper Mollison. He couldn't be any more wide open. 40 yards is 15 to nothing, Vestavia. Later, Caden Taylor, 25 yards for the touchdown. 22 to nothing, Vestavia. And then head goes deep to Carson. Man, 60 yards on the touchdown. Vestavia rolling 43 to nothing. Clay Chalkful opened the season with a strong 31 0 win at Briarwood tonight. Another road game for the Cougars, the top ranked team in 6A. The Cougars in Hueytown to play the Golden Gophers. And this was a struggle for Clay Chalkville. The Cougs defense was all over the place. Nicarius Allen with the sack. And then later in the first, you had more great defense from Clay Chalkville because their offense wasn't doing much. Rob Ivey with a shoestring sack for the Cougars. And then the Golden Gophers would tack on three after a field goal. And then Allen tries to get more airing it out, but it's tipped into the hands of Xavier Starks for the pick. Hueytown led it. 3 nothing at the half, but the Cougars opened up the second half with a kickoff return for a score to go up 7-3 in the fourth. More Clay Chalkville D. Randell Cole stuffs the Golden Gophers. And then Hueytown putting deep in their own end zone. Marlon Compton fields it at the 40, and he's just busting through tackles to take it all the way in for their second special teams score of the night. And Clay Chalkville wins it 17-3. It was, it was ugly. I mean, offensively, we played. I mean, about as bad as you could play. A ton of penalties. Yeah, like six penalties in the first quarter. Uh, this is kept putting us by the station. We just, you know, kept having negative plays. But defense, I thought, played extraordinary. I mean, again, kept us in the game. It gave us a short field a lot of times. Uh, kicking game came out big. I and mean, again, we pinned them back on kickoff several times. Hit a big field goal right there. Uh, and then, like I said, you know, a couple of kick returns. There's a difference in the ball game. Uh, so, I mean, great job by defense and special teams. Uh, really, really pulling us through on this game. The Friday night rivals game of the week had McAdory in bounce back mode hosting Pinson Valley. A couple of 6A teams going at it in Bessemer. And McAdory jumped out quickly. Jacob Clopton with a keeper. He'll go in for the score. The Yellow Jackets will build a 14 0 lead before the Indians came back. And it was Rico Freeman who would help bring him back. The nice cutback right here. Pinson Valley would tie it at 14 late in the first half. But even later in the first half, McAdory punches it in again. Kamari Shepard will go in to make a 21-14 Jackets. And then in the third, it's going to be Clopton again. It seems like Clopton has been playing at McAdory forever. He's made a lot of plays. I know that. That's another touchdown. That made it 28-14. And McAdory wins the game of the week 28-17. Now to a good little 6A rivalry. Pelham hosting Oak Mountain. The Eagles have won four straight in this series. Dating back to 2000, this one at Ned Bearden Stadium. And the Pelham Panthers making a lot of plays tonight. And Clayton Maines was one of the guys making plays, looking, looking, and then dodging some tacklers. And Maines would go in for the 12-yard score, a very physical run, and also you know, using his feet very, very well on that play. And Pelham and Oak Mountain, this was a just a tight, tight ball game. There is Maines again off and running with a long distance touchdown. And the Pelham Panthers beat Oak Mountain tonight 24 to 21. Now let's go over to Husky Stadium in Helena. The Huskies hosting Buckhorn tonight. Carson Acker, quarterback of the Huskies. He'll take the snap. He'll look to his right. He'll find David Bowler the third. He'll make like a Randy Moss style catch for the first down. And then next, it's going to be Acker again. This time he's going to hand the ball off to Jeremy Spratling. We'll take it 30 yards up the middle for the Husky touchdown. How about this? Helena was up 49 to nothing with 550 to go in the third. In the fourth, sophomore Nathan Ferguson in to lead the Huskies, but he throws a pick to Cohen Fielder, and Fielder would take it all the way to the five-yard line. Finally, something positive 
happening for the Buckhorn Bucks. And still in the third, Buckhorn now looking to score. Shamaria Landrum scores the touchdown. But look, it was a Helena night, 55-7. The Huskies win big. The Friday Night Blitz rolls on with a look at one of the big teams from Class 2A, the B.B. Comer Tigers in the rain. Battling for the number one spot in the neighborhood cat family, taking on the rival Childersburg Tigers next. The Hoover Bucks hosting Oak Grove, Mississippi. The Bucks trying to bounce back from that loss to Auburn last week. Bucks down 7 0 in the second. Noah Schubach hits a streaking Jordan Woolen, who shows off his speed to tie the game at seven. Bucks down 14 7, still in the second. It's Schubach again. This time to Chris Warren, wide open for the score. It's tied at 14 at halftime. Early in the fourth, Jamal Moultrie making a special team play for the Buccaneers will block the punt and a nice return with it. And then the very next play, Jonah Winston will take the direct snap. And Jonah Winston, after the celebration there after blocking the punt, Jonah Winston will take the direct snap in to your living room to put the Bucks up 21 to 14. But Oak Grove would answer A.J. Maddox will hit P.J. Woodland, who takes it all the way to tie it at 21, send it to overtime, where Oak Grove won it 28-21. to 21. Now a battle of 4A Giants. Seventh-ranked Aniston making the trip, the top-ranked defending state champ, Andalusia. A battle of Bulldogs. Both teams scored a lot of points last week. Andalusia, Jack Lathrop finds Brunson Wilson on the play-action pass. And Andalusia was up 25 to nothing in this one. Fourth quarter, Andalusia with the ball in the two. Jamarium Burnett, the Auburn football commit, will bulldoze his way into the end zone. Andalusia just pouring it on. It's 32 to nothing. Aniston on the next possession turns it over on downs. Andalusia takes over on the 16. And Jordan Skeins goes into the backfield. All Andalusia tonight. They beat Aniston 39 to nothing the final. B.B. Comer, the second ranked team in 2A. The 67th meeting against our tribal Childersburg. And early on, B.B. Comer would establish the ground game. Raylon Sims scampers 14 yards into the end zone. 6-0 Tigers. Few drives later, maybe the run of the game. Quarterback Devin Harvey will call his own number. And on the quarterback keeper, reverses field, cuts back to the right, goes 48 yards into the end zone. That made it 14 to nothing, B.B. Comer, in the driving rain in Childersburg. Childersburg trying to get something going. Christopher Swain taken down by Michael Kirksley. A shoe string tackle for the sack. And you knew there wouldn't be Comer highlights without big number 23, Kamor Harris. He's got reservations for six. 22 nothing in favor of the Tigers. The final score, B.B. Comer wins 34-6. The Moody Blue Devils on the road at Sylacauga. Pick up the action in the second half. Moody up 8-7. Blaine Burke from a few yards out. Punches it in to make it 16-7 Moody. The Aggie offense had major issues moving the ball at points this evening, but early in the third, C.J. Franklin throws to Jakari Cottingham. He'll make one cut, and then he goes 65 yards for the touchdown. 16-14 Moody. Later in the quarter, it's Burke Head, and this young man ran hard tonight. In for the second score of the half, Blue Devils back up by two scores. And then in the fourth, Moody trying to put it away. Caden Cofield explodes through the second level all the way down to the Aggie six-yard line. And then just to play later, it's Brighton Usry in at quarterback for Moody. He'll go in for the score, and Moody wins at 31-17. Gordo is the second-ranked team in 3A, opening up the season with three straight road games. Last week at Sipsy Valley. Tonight at Bibb County. Gordo, Jace Neal will fake the screen pass left, throw it right to receiver Ethan Wilder, who has a convoy of blockers in front of him. He'll take it all the way down the sideline for six. And Gordo led early. Bibb County had a response, though. Jay Harris takes the handoff, sidesteps the defender, and goes all the way for the score. And that ties it up. And then Bibb County looking to add on to it. Jordan Leverett, perfectly thrown ball to Kavon Holman for the touchdown. And Bibb County wins it 33-21, to 21, the final. 
Let's show you a couple of games from last night. The Parker Thundering Herd ranked fourth in 6A, taking on Ramsey, the number one team in 5A. The Herd with a big stop here on fourth and three. Jeremiah Hall with a sack on fourth and goal, keeping the Rams out of the end zone. And in the final minute of the first half, Malik Muhammad hits Naeem Offord with a TD pass. One of two TD throws for Muhammad. Herd wins it 20 to 17. Mountain Brook went on the road. Got it done with special teams and Cole Gamble against James Clements. Special teams play. They blocked the punt out of the end zone. That gave them a 2-0 lead. And then it was all up to Cole Gamble, who loves to run that direct snap. He scored a couple of touchdowns last night. One in the first quarter, and then another in the third quarter. The Spartans are in the win column with an 18-13 win over James Clements. Also tonight, Geraldine knocked off defending 2A champ five, 17-6 in a huge upset on Sam Mountain.